different guests. And tonight I have a very special guest. This is a man that I admire deeply. He is what I call an actor's actor. Um, a very special, gifted, crafted actor, Mr. Michael Wright. He's in the house. Thank you so much for making the time, man. This is, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's just an absolute delight to be here with you uh, this evening, you know. I mean, I'm honored and uh, terribly pleased, you know. I mean, I, I, I actually don't know what, you know, this honor, you know, derived from me. You, you are, you know what, since obviously there's a lot of movies, any, any actor know who Michael Wright is, The Five Heartbeats, Sugar Hill, like going back in time, it's a lot of films and you have a lot of fans and a lot of followers and people who loves you. But mm. in my case, I'm, I'm very extremely proud to have you here because I remember the first time when we met, maybe you don't remember, but we were doing a reading with Lou Torres and Anton. Yes, absolutely. And the last time I saw you was in the Westway Diner, as yeah. a matter of fact. Yes, your memory which, is impeccable. Which, ap which, interestingly enough, was the diner in which the um, Seinfeld uh, program was conceived in, uh -huh. you know, so that's a that very place. interesting fact, you know. Yeah. And there it is, smack dab in the middle of um, Hell's Kitchen, you know, on Ninth Avenue and, well, you know, 44th Street, you know, yeah. and, well, a lot of, uh, a lot of bold inspirations come out of that particular it's vicinity. It's a special place, right? Yes, no question about it. Very, very special, but like I said, I, we were doing a reading for a film and, I remember that I was sitting down concentrating in my lines and my work and next thing I know, I hear this deep, clean, crisp, powerful voice and, and I, I said to my friend, who is that? I didn't know, I mean, who is that? Was it a it basso, basso profundo? It was very muy profundo, nature. con yes. mucha energía, con mucho, let's keep it a little Spanish, muy, muy, una voz muy profunda. Muy profunda. Very deep. Muy yeah. profunda. Mucho profunda. ¿Quién es ese hombre? ¿Quién yeah. es? Who is he? Oh, sí, sí, that's my Très profunda. Now we're speaking French. Oh, oui. Yeah. Bien sûr. Merci beaucoup. Moi, je, je parle français aussi. Je, je m'appelle ceci. Très bien. Oui, quand j'ai 18 ans, moi, j'ai demeuré avec euh, une famille française dans un petit suburb de Paris. Et, pas personne dans sa famille, il a parlé anglais, so il est pourquoi pour ma propre pour apprendre un petit peu de français. So it's completely fluid. You can oh. speak, you can, you can understand a film in French, right, Michael? Well, moi, j'ai oublié beaucoup de ma française maintenant. Mais ça, wow. pour chaque pan, Bahasa Indonesia, I speak Indonesian, and um, Watashi wa Nihongo National Kotega, I speak Japanese as well. <laughs> Yeah. I can't believe this. It's crazy, but you know, I made an amazing film in Japan about 10 years ago, and it was called Bedtime Eyes, and it was based on a best selling uh, novel, you know, um, uh, there, you know, by an award winning author, you know, and um, I made that film with, the, with an actress, you know, who at that point was perhaps the most popular actress in the Japan, Japan at that time. Okay. And we just did something, some extraordinary work together. And I kept going back and forth there, you know, uh -huh. because we somehow or another relation, a relationship engendered between us, you know, in the course of filming uh -huh. that movie. So uh -huh. it's one of those sort of things that happens with actors and actresses. Right, right, right. And you speak Spanish too. Ah, uh, sí, yo hablo estás? un poco de español. ¿Dónde aprendiste el español? No, todos los gentes uh, en ¿Toda Nueva York, todos todo los gentes en Nueva York, uh, you know, este necesito por hablar español. Everybody should in New York should, you know, speak Spanish. It's necessary to speak Spanish in New York, you know. I mean, uh, speaking a little bit of, um, uh, excuse me, speaking a little bit of Indian, you know, might go a long way as well. I can't believe it. I yeah. can't believe it. You see, this when I see you, Michael, you have so much softness. Like you're so soft. Well, There's a lot of softness in you. Even though when the characters that I see you in film obviously are the complete perte, opposite. Perte, man. Yo estoy muy dulce. 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 It is muy dulce. dulce. Very yeah. sweet. 
<laughs> it is muy dulce. Okay, Michael, let's go back. Can we go back in the, from the, right to the beginning Would of I your mean? profession as an actor, when you decided to be an actor, a little bit of your upbringing. And, uh, and I wanted to say something that I wanted to say it in the beginning of the interview. I wanted to express my condolences for your mothers. Thank you so very much. From the bottom of my heart, I feel you. I lost my dad almost a year Thank ago. Thank you so very, very much. I mean, I, I really do appreciate your sympathies, you know, you kind regards you know I mean my mom was my absolute best friend and um, uh, and I miss her you know so deeply you know that I, I just words just simply can't express it you know but um, but you know that she's in a better place right Michael well I, uh, we know that, that for sure Can, do that, you feel that, it? That, that's arbitrary but you know I mean she was in a good place when she was you know still here with me in my life, it, you know, we'll we'll find out how much of a better place she is, and you know, at you know, an appropriate time. Yeah. But my mom is um, particularly responsible for the um, the uh, generation of my career. You know, she encountered a lovely lady named Anna Strasberg when my mom owned an antique clothing store on Columbus Avenue and 72nd Street oh, called Jezebel. That. And Ms. Strasberg came into the store and my mom shared the uh, fact that uh, she had a son, you know, who was, you know, uh, a fledgling actor. Uh -huh. And Ms. Strasberg invited me to come down to the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute, you know, and to have a meeting with her. Mm -hmm. and that meeting well changed your life changed my life one thing led to another she um she uh, uh got me my first agent my first manager and well one thing led to the other and um i got my first film in 1979 78 it was the wanderers directed by philip kaufman and um i just never quite looked back after that you know so do you mm -hmm. remember the first before we get into film, like the work that you did in, in class? Yeah. Please, absolutely. I hear about you know, the I, work I did, that you did tremendous class. things in class. I had the greatest teachers. You know, I mean, I had a wonderful teacher named Irma Sandre. I had another wonderful teacher named Bill Greaves. I had another wonderful. I, I just had so many wonderful teachers there. As it it got to a point where Anna said to me that she just knew that I was going to go on from that point and become a star, so she wanted me just to have every possible thing that she could provide for me. Because when I left there, she thought I would never come back. But contrary to that, you know, I kept coming back, you know, after a five and six year period, you know, because that's how an actor constructs their craft. You know, I mean, you never stop learning, no. you know, and uh, it's an ongoing process, if you will, you know. Mm -hmm. And so she gave me a kind, well, I was there originally on a work study program. I mean, I mopped floors, I answered phones. I've done it all, give me five, know, man. You got it, baby. We've you got know, it going on, baby. You know, oh, and absolutely. I mopped floors, I interviewed uh, fledgling uh, students and all of that sort of thing and uh, I mean I introduced them to the uh, the Strasbourg you know method process if you will you know mm -hmm. and determined who would or would not be an appropriate candidate you know to enter the school if you will mm -hmm. uh, and after time um, Anna and Lee and I became Lee's secretary you know, while I was studying with him and I studied with Anna, who became my mentor. But I became Lee's secretary, and um, she was just so determined, you know, that I just get out there, mm -hmm. you know, and get into the work environment, you know. I mean, she was terrified that I might be terrified, you know, to leap into that sort of mm -hmm. vortex, if you will, you know, but I did. You know, and um, I just began to do a series of, um, uh, how should you put it, um, showcases, you know, I uh -huh. mean, uh, and on stage and just had to do it. And I love working on the stage. I mean, it's just like 
engaging in a high wire act, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, there's no, there are no cuts. You know, there are no takes. Right. You, know, you gotta go you've forth just and gotta just do, do it. it, and you've got to rampage down to the edge of the proscenium arch and challenge yourself and challenge that audience and draw them in and make them part you know, of that process because you know the theater process is not complete until you draw in the audience the absolute other character there, mm -hmm. which is, as you say, the audience, mm -hmm. you know. And there's nothing that I've loved more than to have a creakless audience, a creakless theater, you know, where you just know that they are so terribly and completely engaged that they don't dare move, you know. Right. I mean, they don't dare move. That's they don't, they don't dare, dare move. move. You know, well and said. also, also, they don't dare. You know, open up. You know, a uh, 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 um, Snickers bar, right. or something like or that. Or send a text. Yeah, because you know who they are, and you know what they're doing. You know, and they are. If they're doing that kind of thing, or if they're engaging in that kind of behavior, you know that they are somehow or other, you know, um, uh, depriving their fellow audience members, you know, of the substance of that performance. And as an actor, you know exactly, damn well, who that person is in the audience. And you can skip a beat and look out there, and they know that you know who they are, and they will disengage in that kind of behavior, and you just get on with it. Mm -hmm. And you basically put that into the work, you know, you incorporate that into the process. You know, but there have been times, you know, when actors have been on stage, and the damn cell phones rang. I know. And they pick Everybody's them up. Everybody's texting and sending messages when you're on stage. They've yeah. done it on Broadway. I mean, I've seen all this. They Madonna did it on uh, the public. She you went know? to see a play it, in the public. It's, it's she crazy. Was texting. It's crazy. You know, it's just so, uh, well, how should I put it? You know, it's disrespectful so to the craft. Disrespectful. Right? It's so disrespectful to the craft and to the process, you know. And to the actors, you know? man. It's insane. Oh. oh. But, oh. um, so it's like, and then when you decided to go to L.A., basically. Oh, I never decided to go you, to L.A. It, it came to you, yes, obviously. But I had you, to go. You were ready for that, I had right? To go. At the moment you said, okay, this is what I want. I it can do it. It was the most amazing thing it. that ever happened to me in my life. You know, I got cast in a, um, a uh, science fiction um, uh uh, miniseries. It was called the V. The NBC, the, yeah. The v. v, the final and, battle. Yeah, well, right. that one and the initial one. But the it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. You know, landing at LAX, being picked up and driven, you know, down I-10 and coming down Barnum, Barnum Boulevard and just seeing the Warner Brothers studio. Uh -huh. And I felt that Damn. This is what I want. I have this arrived. Is you know. You know how blessed you were? Yeah. You know, this is where I arrived. It was like coming in, it was like descending into the Emerald City. You know. I mean, it was just, I mean, there, there were all of those sort of hangar like sound, uh, s sound, uh, st uh, sound studios and that, and the, 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 mile high, you know, water tower there, you know, uh -huh. and I mean, it was just Surreal. everything that you ever imagined that it would be, you know, and yeah, I mean, I, you I were really not scared for out. a bit, Michael? Or intimidated no, no, or overwhelmed? I, I, not really, no, I mean, I was just incredibly flabbergasted, I mean, I was there, and going through that studio gate, you know, and being directed to my 
my, my, my dressing room and being able to have the freedom to walk around that lot and to see all of those sets and such, you know, that I was familiar with, you know, from my childhood. I mean, it was just, amazing. it was just, it was amazing. A dream. Yes, it was a dream come true. A dream you come know, true. You know, for someone who wanted to be an actor and wanted to be a film actor for all their life, you know, I mean, it was awesome. And I, I have to admit it, you know, I mean, I was awestruck, you know. Did you call your mama that day? Oh, well, absolutely. Immediately, right? Yeah, every day. Every day? Yes, ma'am. Let's talk about the five heartbeats. I know that you were in Miami Vice too. Oh, you used to be a big fan of I Miami Vice. I was in Vice. Miami Vice, yeah. Don Johnson and I had a, to be I had a wonderful opportunity to uh, uh, fly down to uh, Miami and um, do a uh, an episode of Miami Vice uh, directed by a wonderful director um, uh, who I believe is no longer with us. He was John Nicolella. And uh, I did an episode that was called The Savage, you know, that was an episode about an assassin, you know, who, who victimized Asian women with long dark hair mm. because he had been a victim in his own right, you know, because he had somehow, through his, through his, um, uh, excursion through Vietnam been castrated, mm -hmm. you know, by, you know, um, a Vietnamese woman or Vietnamese, uh, Viet Cong woman, you know, and he was just, he's kind of extracting revenge, you know, on women, you know, who sort of fit that kind of physical type, if, if you will. And um, uh, the fellow who played, um, Dith Pran in, um, what was it, uh, the, uh, what was that, uh, the great Vietnamese actor, oh my gosh, you know, and the name of the film just doesn't come to mind right now, but I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, it, it'll, it'll, it'll come. come back, yeah, uh, but he was in that film too, in, in that episode as well, you know, and he's an amazing actor too, you know, he's also deceased as well. But um, uh, it was a wonderful uh, experience for me doing that episode of Miami Vice, you know, you know, with Don Johnson and I used to be with in love Don with that man, Johnson. don't ask me why. Well, you know, he's... Don't ask me why. Yeah, you know, he's got something about him, you know. Something I mean, about uh, him, right? You know, he's got that sort of, as you say in French, je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Oh, I have know, to learn yeah, French. Yeah. Now you put it in the spot. Oh, gosh, man, you speak French. I wish I could. No, I had to learn it. Now you are I, French, I, I thought. I, I, did I look French to you? Yeah, you look my French to me. Really? More than Spanish? <laughs> you look very French to me, but I don't know. But you thought that I was Danish last night on the phone. We chatted about it, you know. Yeah, we talked about that. Because you were on your way to Denmark. That's correct, and, and your Sweden. memory is impeccable. Well, I'm an actor. Yes, you, yes damn yeah. right you are, Thes Michael. Thespians rely upon their memories, if you will. You absolutely are. Let's talk about the five heartbeats, 1991. It's the thing that I am absolutely best known, known for, for, you know. And the character um, that I played in that film, uh, Eddie King Jr., is without a question an iconic film figure, yeah. you know, in African-American cinema, you know. I can't go anywhere on any given day and not encounter people, you know, that that fig, finger me out, you know, as Eddie King and or, you know, say, um, say lines from my, my role in that film. They know, they know all of my lines. songs, yes, and they know my lines better than mm -hmm. me, you know. I mean, I go out on the street every day and I hear, nights like this, I wish, I wish raindrops would fall. <laughs> nights like this, I wish raindrops would fall. It's all over the net. Just Google it. I will, I, mean, I promise. Just Google it, you know. It's insane. Yeah. You know, I mean, they love that song. Um, 
They love that song, and they just absolutely love that character. As a matter of fact, interestingly enough, when Fox uh, tested that film uh, prior to its release, the film tested higher than anything that Fox had ever tested before, but for certain marketing mishaps, you know, uh, I think that it was misconstrued or whatever, you know, they didn't understand what would sell that film. Um, and they thought that it was going to be a kind of Robert Townsend slapstick comedy, you know, um, right. a la um, Hollywood Shuffle. You know, rather than an iconic, you know, film about, you know, three African-American, oh no, five African-American men, you know, who bonded together, you know, and had this amazing journey, journey. you know, and experience, you know, through the, through the music business, you know, and it was, it was amazing, you know. Yeah. Do you and keep in touch with the other guys? Yes, I do. You As a matter of fact, I'm very, very close to Harry J. Lennox, mm -hmm. the fellow who played Dresser, you know, the dancer fellow, you know, but I do keep in touch with him. Uh, Tico Wells, I keep in touch with. Uh, all of those guys um, uh, attended my mom's services when she passed away, you know, so yeah, we're all really close. You know, Robert showed up, Leon was there, uh, Harry was there. Um, so, yeah, we're all very, very close. I mean, we, you know, we're like the five heartbeats. We're, right. we're like those old guys, you know, who, you know, who, we're like that old group, you know, who. You look guys very cute, you know, I've seen when you no, went We're to like that, that old group, you know, uh, where are they now kind oh. of thing, you know, and, I, you, know, <laughs> you know, you see them like, you know, 25 years later and like, we're, the, we're like that gang, you know. But we are still the five heartbeats. We're like the Dells. We're like the Temptations. Right. You know, we're all like really tight, and we all really identify with our um, our, our experience and our characterizations mm -hmm. in that film. You know, I will for the rest of my life be Eddie King Jr. or as most people like to refer to him as Eddie Kane. Eddie Kane, yeah. like <laughs> Kane, you know, it is like Eddie Kane, Eddie Kane, 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 like a Kane. Right. Well, it's because I put a kind of, you know, southern kind of drawl, you know, whenever I referred to myself in the first person, mm. you know, throughout the film. I don't know, like, Hey, the whole world is an ashtray to Eddie Kane, you know, and my God, <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You have those incredible, you know, incredible, you know, um, uh, incredible kind of um, moments, you know, where they define your character, right. you know, and I was sitting around, you know, and improvising, you know, and I was doing this scene with the, you know, in the hotel room with the two or three prostitutes there, you know, and, you know, I was just sitting around and I went, yeah, <laughs> The whole world's an ashtray to Eddie Kane, you know. And I was putting out a cigarette, right? You know, but it was defining. Sure, everybody you know? knows the Five Heartbeats. Everybody loves it. It's everybody crazy. Everybody loves that film. And they all love. They love the um, the last scene in, in, incredibly because it was the first scene that was shot. You know, because we had to grow facial hair. Mm -hmm. You know, back to forward. So right. yeah, I did that scene, I feel like going on in the church, right? Mm -hmm. And I asked Robert to have the um, DP uh, start the shot on me down here because I knew that you were going to hear my voice, you know. So I wanted them to see because I wanted and I knew throughout this process that in my characterization, the hands were going to be emblematic of the character. Right. So I that. wanted him 
You see the language that it. you use, and that is, I'm, I'm and hearing you out because I, I, I'm yeah. paying attention and to you, I Michael. And I asked but him to ask the DP to start down here, and I was going, ooh, 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 and my girl baby doll comes in, and she's got the, you know, the, the uh, mezzo-soprano, and then I wanted to go up this way like this, and ooh, and meet me here. Mm. I feel like going on. But I wanted that audience to know yeah. that they were meeting Eddie again. Sure. So I started him down here. And he started it low, basso profundo. Ooh. And I knew that that audience was going to know that was Eddie. And he was back. From there. the dead. And, right. and then as the camera, you know, as the camera, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, went up, or whatever, you know, the hand met the face. Mm. Yeah. As the, ha as the camera panned up, you know, the hand met the face. And the audience was just simply going to be blown away that this character, yeah. whom you thought was done for, was back, he and he was back. back there in that church. You know your craft, you know your craft. We're almost, you see the credits are already rolling, but we're gonna keep going for another 15 minutes. I just wanted to mention your, my friend, your friend, John Michael Bolger. Yes. He's a big fan of yours, and I wanted he to say a, hi, I John. Am, I am say a hi to you, we love you, baby. I'm a huge fan of his. To, we're fans, he knows. I'm a it's huge a love fan story of between his. us since we met at the Actors Studio back in 2003. He but is, he's a big fan of yours. He is one of the finest actors you know, in the world. You know, and I know. And we are both members of the Actors Studio because I got invited there. You know, and what it year? was one of the biggest honors honor I had. Uh, Frank uh, Casaro was the uh, um, artistic director there. Mm. And um, I think I've got the card. Oh, I carry it with me. You do yeah. carry it? Really? Oh, absolutely. It was one of, my, one of the finest days in my life as an actor. I lived. I lived to become a member of the actor's studio. I didn't want to go through that process. process. And what's wrong with that process? I've been through it. That's okay. Well, You're not hurting my feelings, but tell me. Tell me your story. I just didn't want them jackasses to be judging me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well, Michael, you know, it's I'm like... I'm sorry. No, 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 Look, no, no. You gotta no, tell what's in, no, your, no, in no. your heart. Uh, no, no, more appropriately, and I, I was just being um, facetious. Um, I worked very hard to learn my craft, right. you know, not necessarily to perfect it, but to... To, to be great at it. To, to be good at it. At least be decent and good at it, you know? Right. And I just didn't think that all of those persons in that place, you know, were necessarily, you know, um, uh, appropriate right. you know, to, to stand in judgment of me. Judgment is I a did. word that I don't like, that I don't like mm. to use, Michael. Yeah. I don't know why we keep judging, judging, and judging one another. It but I love, stop. I love that, I love that place. Yes, that place me too. Is, that place is a cathedral for me. It is to me too. And I don't ever pass it without crossing myself, you know. When was the last time that you went to session? Uh, oh, boy. That it's long, been, Michael? It's, it's, it's been a while, you know, really? actually. Really? Remember the last time you went? Probably about a year ago. Oh, that's not too bad. Well, you know, I do, you know. But... <sighs> do you used to go when, when Sheila Winters and all of them were the moderators? You know, or I mean... John's always talking about those days, so I was around when, you know, when... Yeah, you know, they would come like, and yeah. Paul Newman would come and yeah, Wood what I would I would be there life. with Paul, you know, of course, and, and you know, and you know, Shirley, of course, you know, and you know, Miss Burstein, you know. Hell, yeah, Ellen Burstein. Yes, absolutely. She's, Estelle Parsons is the one. Yeah, and Estelle, Estelle. Is, is is fabulous, you know. 
you know, she's, she's just brilliant, you know, and yeah. she's just one of those grand dames, you know, of the thespianado. You throw me off with those words. God knows you're deep. Please. God knows you're deep, Michael. And I'm, ser I'm dead serious. HBO Oz. Can we you know, talk a little bit about that? Oh, you're kidding me. Please. That was just amazing. That was like summer camp. Really? That, that Yeah. I got that job. I was asked to audition for um, one episode of that, okay? Mm -hmm. And I went in there. And I just went totally berserk, you know. And I went through a week of that episode. And then after that was finished, I went back to my dressing room and there was another script on my bed. And I said, okay, that's interesting. And so I did that episode. And then when that was finished, there was another script on my bed. And I said, okay. And then I did that episode and there was another script on my bed. And so I said, oh, shit. I guess I must be a regular. <laughs> you know. I love that. You know, so what a so blessing! Then, what a blessing, Michael. So then, so then, at one point <laughs> when the season was finished, uh, I asked Tom Fontana uh, to give me a raise. Well, needless to say, that didn't happen. <laughs> but <laughs> let me tell you something, though. Um, I got a raise. In another way, I got more time on the screen. Good for you. You know, and uh, Oz was one of those shows where if you got your script, let me see your pad here, you, you do this, you go. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I'm leading the show, okay? Because <laughs> the script was about 60 pages. Right. And you go to the last page. Yeah. And see if you were still alive. Because with Oz, there were just like two ways that you could be off the show, as far as I was concerned. Right. One was I could be gang raped, which meant I was quitting. <laughs> the, other <laughs> one. the other one was what it would be that I was killed, you know, but I would be off the show. But I stayed on the show to its uh, last episode, and um, Joel Gray. The second to last episode, and uh, the great Joel Gray played a character, character named Idzik, and well, he was a murderer, and he slit my throat, and I knew it was over. Uh -huh. But with Oz, you know, you went to the last page to see Good if he you. was still on the show. Good for you. So Good you know, you. and I had a marvelous experience with um, uh, who's the. Uh, the uh, lady who was the uh, who sang in Cats. Uh, Which one? Uh, I'm not good with names. Da, 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 da. No, Cats. Oh, yeah, but she's the one who sings. The, no, the, the, you're talking about the Broadway show. The right? Broadway show. But it's quite a few different women. No, I mean the woman oh, who good. was like the. Oh God, I feel like a. I completely feel like they need, I, I, I completely, I, I don't yeah. know. When she, I know, I know, and I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Jesus Michael, damn, man. I can't believe the word this wasted, that we cannot remember her name. And it's a big name, but we can't remember. Wow. Sarah Brightman. Oh, Sarah Brightman. There you go, honey. There you go, Gloria Messer. Of course, she's the voice of God. Yeah, and she taught my character how to sing <laughs> on Oz. <laughs> Well, she's the voice of God. Yes. Michael. Oh, she is. She, Gloria Messer. Gloria. That's her. That's, she's the technical director. She's Are behind the there? camera. She's well in the control room, Michael. You Golly. can't see her, but you can, you can feel her, right? <laughs> well, well, you every, know. Every time when she speaks, it's like, oh, God, help me, God. You know, you she's, just, she's in the house. You just know when you're working with the pros. Yeah, Sarah Brown, she's, she's quite a talented woman. Yeah. She has the voice of God. It was God. amazing. It was amazing. Totally. And she appeared on there. I mean, I mean, Rita Marino was on the show. I mean, everybody was on the show. Everybody. All of these great Broadway figures but, were on that show. But I want to talk about a little bit. Tom she, Fontana was a genius. You know, have you written your story, Michael? Uh, Autobiography? I'm, I'm you should not try quite to sit down, yet. man. I'm just, I'm just a little too lazy for it now, you know? 
Phyllis? Yeah. Even yeah, one well, page a day. Can even half yeah. a page. I got it. Oh, look at me there. That's you. That's your profile. That's you still, your good, cheekbones man. are very high. We're going to uh, wrap it up you in five minutes. Tone them down. I want to <laughs> talk to you about, about the acting process with your characters, how you approach the character, man. It's like you are so oh. crafted in your work. You do like to share that or is, you keep it private? I usually don't discuss it. You don't like well, that? I came to the acting process having read every conceivable thing that concerned it, you know, and I wanted to go to one place, this place, the other place, and I finally wound up at the Strasbourg Institute. Mm. because I was an acolyte of um, Konstantin Stanislavski. I knew that stuff. I knew Boleslavski, you know. I knew Vaktangov. I knew all of that stuff before I got there, you know. And I understood how the process, how the process Heard. I just knew that I had to get there and I knew what was important. It was relaxation, it was concentration, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Deep. And that was it. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And intent. And having, you know, a complete faith right. in what you were doing. And I would do everything. I would score my scripts. I'd score my scripts like it was nobody's business. And yeah. I would do everything, word for word, line for line, moment for moment, beat for beat. Yeah. You know? This is your passion. Like that. You know? Like yes. that. Like yeah. that. And at the end of it, I would throw it all away. And have faith in the work and what I'd done. Sure, like fighters do okay? with the, the training. That's it. That's it. They would fight. That's you it. Show up and you do it. You're a boxer. Yeah. You know. You know. You throw combinations. Yes. You know. Left hook. Yeah. Left jab. Uh huh. Left uh -huh. hook. Uh huh. Right hand. Right hand. Double you know? jab. Double jab. Jab. Right jab. Double jab. Right hand. Yeah. Cross. Uppercut. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Yep. Yep. This way. Yeah. You do the work and the training and you do it, live it, but then the day of the fight, uh, you let it be. You just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Right. Let Rock it go. Right. Let it go. Right. Let it go. Let it go. You man. know? Let it go. I know. I work on my characters. At the end of the day, when the man said cut, I take that character off like this shirt and hang him up in the closet. You know, uh -huh. because I didn't want to go out of my mind. Good for you, you know, but at the next, the next opportunity, the next day, I put that character back on, mm -hmm. you know, and I would relax. I would arrive at that set, that stage. Be on time. At that set, that stage, always be on time, you know, and go around there, you know, that set, that stage. And familiarize myself. I would do place. I would do time. I would do, you know. You name it, man. Various overalls, uh -huh. you know. Um, uh, my sense memory. Everything that I wanted to do in the process, you know. Beautiful. I mean, Beautiful. you know, substitutions, uh -huh. you know. Uh, you name it. You name it. Yep. You know, if I was working with you. And you were my scene partner. Uh -huh. I would look at you, and I'd find your eyebrows. And those would be the eyebrows of some gal, you mm -hmm. know, that was appropriate, mm -hmm. you know, for that scene. If I had a moment, you know, where I had to do something in particular, I'd feel your pants, you know, and those, that... Since, since memory, mm 
mm -hmm. would make an association for me. Right. It would trigger, with something trigger, that trigger. would trigger an emotion. Right. You know? I want your sweater, you know, like that. One minute to you go. Know? One minute to go. I want your sweater like that, you know. That's it. It That's would it. trigger something. Yes. You, you know? see how it's And I wouldn't famous? do anything dishonest. Never. You don't do anything dishonest. But everything has to be honest. Right. I love it. Michael, we have to wrap it up because we have a have an, number one, thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you for having me. Right? This was a good connection. I listened to you. I'm listening to every single word. I don't care about the cameras much at all. I'm here for you, baby. I want baby. to sit down with you. I know you're loaded. You have a lot to say. It's a lot of things that we didn't cover, man. I wanted to talk a little bit more about life and what you had learned and lessons and happiness and sadness and a little, a little bit of what we need to hear as human beings to wake okay, up a little well, bit. Okay, well, let's talk about every place I've been. Bali, you know, Belize. You France, know, Denmark. F Fiji, France, Denmark, Hong Kong, you Japan. know, Tokyo. Uh huh. Let's go. Beautiful. Well, we're going to do it the next time when you come. Hopefully yes, you're going to come back to me. Yes, ma'am. You promise? I'd be delighted. You're a woman of, you had a good time? Yes, I absolutely did. It's exactly what you expected or a little more? Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming. Let me ask you, final question. Are you happy? I'm happy to be here with you. I can't get, uh, you see, this man has the right answer. What's your sign, Michael? What's my sign? Yes, I'm asking you, what's your sign? Taurus. Ooh, like my husband. Damn. Man, you're always right. You still married? I am. Oh, shit. Last thing I know, yes, Michael. But I love your voice. I love your craft. You're somebody who inspires me. You're an actor's actor, man. You're the real deal. The real deal. Thank you for having me, Sissy. Thank you so much. Gloria, that's what we call a wrap. I will guys see you next week. And uh, thank you for watching.